Hello, welcome to my channel, KC Sledge Storyteller. Carrie Chug here to talk about the wonderful world of storytelling and to tell, open up discussion about how we can tell the best stories we possibly can. I am sorry that I was, there was nothing last week. I had this ambitious idea of what to talk about last week and then I, uh, I couldn't make it what I thought I could. It was a bit too ambitious. But uh, last time it was dialogue, today it's about putting together combat scenes in comics specifically. Now, not all combat scenes are in superhero comics, but that will be the primary focus. While no one uh, should approach writing comics the way screenplays are written, they're not movies on paper, movies can work as an effective reference for parts of a comic book script. Just you shouldn't try to duplicate it completely. But the first thing to ponder upon when writing a fight scene it should be about what is at stake. It can range from the hero's own safety, though that should only happen every once in a while, and otherwise it starts feeling less and less like that hero is the defender. And it can be the hero's loved ones, and that too shouldn't dominate a continuity, something every once in a while, or the safety of a community, and that has a huge range. It uh, ranges from being a neighborhood all the way to being a whole universe. Now, Choosing the stakes is easy. Making the scene engaging, that's the challenge. And that's something that you don't so much learn from instruction, but by drawing inspiration from what has engaged you, uh, favorite movies, favorite books, and uh, that's followed by putting uh, to practice all that together until you find your groove. Uh, sometimes there are stakes within stakes, and often it happens that the hero has a roadblock in front of him or her, in getting to the key stake, which is often uh, self-defense, well, you know, that's involved, which that often involves a pet peeve of mine. Uh, the whole idea where the hero is down and at the mercy of the villain, but the villain hesitates just long enough for the hero to break away and uh, have the victory. I've always found that reasoning, the, the reasoning people give for that to be flimsy, especially seeing real world scenarios like those terrorist groups out there, once they have captured a person, that person lives only long enough to be put on camera to be executed. That, that's a sad reality that we deal with here, but it, it's also a reality that has me um, going more in check with uh, just what uh, a true blue villain would uh, would be doing and uh, what we what the stakes should be. But, that wasn't my excuse for putting this video up, just the elephant in the room. And that uh, still segues into another factor, which I uh, just made harder with that big rant. Uh, the, antagonist, the antagonist has to be formidable. Now, having the hero single-handedly cleaning house among villains has its place. It's the kind of thing that you often use in the hero's breakout scene that establishes why they're a formidable force for good. Not always the way to go, but it's nonetheless proven to be effective. But uh, that big final showdown demands that the chief protagonist needs to be at least formidable, uh, as formidable, if not superior, to establish the hero's courage, heart, and drive. I like the climactic battle uh, in the, the movie The Incredible Hulk, the one with Ed, Edward Norton, uh, as an example of what I have in mind. Abomination is clearly the bigger and stronger of the two, and there aren't long pauses in the battle, what I was talking about. But the Hulk manages to find the right moves to um, make and come out victor. A stronger foe doesn't have to mean creating the kind of scenario I just trash-talked. Also, you need to factor in emotions. It can be about the pre-established emotions that led to the battle. It can be the reactions from one because of the actions of the other. Often it's the trash talking going on between the opponents and while I have issues with overly lopsided fights, I totally go for the good monologue just before the fight begins or in the middle of the fight. What's key is with any dialogue is that it resonates and is engaging. What um, What's key with the scene altogether is that you put uh, even more energy into both the stakes and the emotions than the actual fight moves. But, okay. Let's talk about the physicality of the fight imagery. You've got your basic fisticuffs, you've got true to life firearms, you've got heavy duty powder powers involved either with man-made arsenals or cosmic forces. 
it ultimately falls to the artist unless you're that artist to depict imagery uh the imagery of that battle but as a writer you shouldn't slack on bringing your imagination into making that scene because of how static comic images are generally there has to be an exaggeration of movement compared to the look of live action fights so the, a lot of leaning a lot of uh, you know lots of right crosses more right crosses than happens in uh, real life box boxing matches but panel descriptions ought to encourage the artist to make it look dynamic then you have, I guess, choreography, for lack of a better word. What's involved here is the fighting style. And for all my belief in comics as an art form and the, the things I've seen done that are hard to imagine being effectively done in prose or in motion picture, uh, there are real limits to conveying certain fighting styles in comics, such as um, such close quarter uh, art, martial arts um, with heavy impact, those styles like Kempo, Casey, which was beautifully implemented in the Dark Knight trilogy, or the one that leaves uh, me in complete awe, uh, the Israeli martial art Krav Maga. These styles have moves that are so short range that showing impact would nearly be impossible as far as I can see. I could be wrong. If anybody watching this has seen that accomplished, I want to see it. But I still recommend getting something of an idea of how martial arts work to get an idea of making things look authentic. Finally, pacing. As you get educated in writing comics, you'll eventually be told at some point that in terms of the speed of the story's running time, bigger panels serve to evoke a fast pace and smaller panel panels evoke tension, slow tension. And fight scenes, they go the opposite way. Big panels are about that, about showing that big knockout blow or heavy feats of strength, while a string of several smaller panels are close-ups of the moves where they hit to indicate rapid movement. Same applies to gunfights, you know, small pistol fire panels. Uh, you know, they're, they're small. And panels with shotgun blasts or rocket launchers, uh, they, uh, they ought to be big. It's hard to imagine the heavy-duty power panels Doing some doing anything rapid, but I'm not sticking my neck out to say that I've, that's never been done or shouldn't be done. Um, that's another thing I'd like to see if, uh, be done effectively. But that's my outlook on comic book fight scenes. If you like this video, please click like. If you like this channel, please click subscribe and share this channel with a friend. I hope we can get some discussion going. Agree, disagree, something I didn't mention. Please comment below. But thank you for your time and have a great day.